This is Turd Flinging Monkey for TFM News. I was going to respond to an article in the Wall Street Journal called Lawmakers Introduce Bill Requiring Women to Register to Draft by Felicia Schwartz, except as I was reading the article, this splash screen came up saying I had to subscribe or sign in to continue reading. And because I don't want to reward the Wall Street Journal, I'm going to be responding instead to a small article in the New York Times by the Associated Press called Lawmakers Introduce Bill to Make Women Register for Draft. This isn't really an article, it's basically just a press release. So I'm just going to read it word for word because it's really short. It says, Washington, two Republican congressmen who are military veterans have introduced a bill requiring women to register for the draft. Representatives Duncan Hunter of California and Ryan Zinke of Montana announced Thursday that the legislation is aimed at provoking a fuller discussion of the Pentagon's decision to open all combat roles to women. Hunter and Zink, Zinke, I don't know. I'll just call him Zinke. Hunter and Zinke say the decision ignores research from the Marine Corps and Special Operations Forces. They also say the decision was made without considering whether women should be drafted and potentially serve on the front lines. Hunter says it's unfortunate the Draft America Daughters Act had to be introduced and he might even vote against his own bill. Hunter served the Marine Corps with tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. Zinke is a former Navy SEAL. Unquote. End of article. So, I remember seeing some stuff about this in my Google Plus feed a while ago. People, you know, saying, oh, you know, now women are going to have to be drafted. How's it feel? Equality now. And also in my video, The Three Reasons Why Women Shouldn't Vote, I mentioned that the fact that women have been exempted from the draft disqualifies them from having the right to vote because they never earned it. And a few people did respond when articles like this were coming out that, oh, now that women are going to be drafted, would I support women voting now? And the answer is no. But before I even explain that, let me just tackle this article. So this bill, this Draft America's Daughters Act, and you know how politicians love to make little cute acronyms with their bills. So of course it spells dad, like you're supposed to pull on your heart and oh come on fathers, you're not going to let your daughters go to war are you? You need to protect your little girls. You know, who gives a shit about your sons going to war, but oh protect your little daughters, oh you can't send your daughters to war. And they even admit in this small little tagline article that they're going to vote against it. They didn't introduce this bill to actually get women drafted. They're basically using it to start a conversation, quote unquote, because they don't want combat roles for women. They want them protected. And here's what I don't get. There are so many jobs in the military. The military isn't just a bunch of warriors charging a hill. You know, you have all these logistics, healthcare, food preparation, sanitation, all these background things going on with an army, with a military. Women are fully capable of doing that. And in the event of a no-shit war where a draft is necessary, why not draft women to do those jobs? I don't want women on the front lines because they're a fucking liability. And if you want to know exactly why, all you have to do is look at the army push-up standards for men and women. Men have to do a minimum of 35 push-ups. And they're supposed to do a minimum of 42 push-ups to meet the actual standard. 35 is the bare minimum. They're supposed to do at least 42. All right, so 35 bare minimum, 42 the actual minimum. You know, 35, you're actually like in the, the red zone, I guess. You didn't fail, but you're pretty close. They frown on that sort of thing. You're supposed to go above and beyond. Guess how many push-ups women can do? Their bare minimum is 13 push-ups, but their actual minimum is 19 push-ups. 19 push-ups. That's considered good. Oh, you did 19 push-ups? Congratulations. That's nothing. I mean, 19 push-ups, holy shit. Now, do you really think a woman who can only do 19 push-ups is going to be able to drag a grown man to safety while he's bleeding out in a field? No. And this is why they are a liability in combat. They get tired. They can't carry their shit. They constantly need the big, strong men to protect them. And then when you need them the most, when you got a guy who's wounded, then you got this woman, like, what, trying to drag his legs? Now, I'm fine with them doing jobs that don't require intelligence or physical strength. If they want to drive trucks, if they want to cook food, if they want to be nurses, they could do all those things. Because their physical strength and relative lack of intelligence isn't going to be that big of a determining factor regarding who lives and who dies. But in an environment where the line between life and death is razor thin, you can't afford this diversity feel-good bullshit. 
You can't have girls who can do 19 push-ups in the middle of a combat zone. You know, complaining about how, you know, their gun is hurting their back. I think women should be drafted. They should do all the shit in the background. All the bullshit. They should be cooking all the meals. They should be cleaning the shitters. They should be doing the paperwork. They should be doing all that shit. So the men don't have to. I mean, they're not going to do it as well as a man, obviously. But they could at least do it so they can serve their country. But to the other point, if women were drafted, would that change my mind regarding whether they should vote? And the answer is no. The main thing is, there hasn't been a draft since Vietnam. And there probably never will be again. I mean, we have been fighting a war in Afghanistan and Iraq for over 10 years, and we've never needed a draft. It's been relatively the most bloodless war in history. In the entire Iraq and Afghanistan wars, 6,692 men died. Male soldiers, 6,692. Now, this is during a phase where it's all volunteer, and it's integrated. You have men and women serving. Like, every time you see a commercial for the military, it's always like 50% men and 50% women. It'll be like a black guy, a white girl, a Hispanic guy, and another black girl or something like that, just to show like how diverse the military is. But then when you look at the combat death statistics, 6,692 men died in Iraq and Afghanistan. Guess how many women died in Iraq and Afghanistan? 139. And that's today. That's with our fully integrated, diversity, rah-rah women military. 139 compared to 6,692. So 98% of military deaths were men. So as a compromise, we're talking about, you know, women's suffrage being tied to military service. I'm fine with that. So women's votes collectively can be counted as 2% of the electoral votes. And men can be counted as 98%. How's that sound? I mean, it's still better than it was. I mean, if you compare it to Vietnam, in Vietnam, 47,416 men died. Do you know how many women died in Vietnam? How many military-related women died in Vietnam? Eight. And out of those eight, one of them died from a stroke, one of them died of general illness, and five of them died in plane and helicopter crashes. In Iraq and Afghanistan, 98% of military deaths were men. In Vietnam, 99.98% of military deaths were men. So until those numbers are 50-50, until women are dying in war as much as men are, they haven't earned the right to vote. I mean, just being drafted in 2016 when there's no wars to fight and the draft may never even come back? I mean, it's like fucking, that's like waiting until the game's already over. You know, it's like the last quarter of the game, you're up by 100 points, and then they pull out the retard on the bench, so he can like catch the ball and run and his mom can take a picture. And he's running like, look mom, I'm winning the game for my team. It's like, bitch, you, we're already 100 points ahead. That's what they want. They want to come in at 2016, like, oh look, we're just as strong and capable as the boys. Yeah, now that all the fighting's done. You know, I guarantee, I mean, call it a prediction or whatever. If women are drafted, if they actually pass a law... It for the sake of women's equality that women are now subject to the draft so that women can get put that little badge on their chest about how equal we all are. The second an actual war starts and it's time to actually have a draft, they're going to quickly pass a law to exempt women from the draft. I guarantee it. As soon as push comes to shove, as soon as it's actually time to go out and die for your country, the women are going to get a pass. Because, oh, we, oh we, can't let the, we can't let our daughters die. Send our sons to die, but not our daughters. They're... They're such special little snowflakes. I don't mind that men bear so much responsibility in a nation, in a society. I don't mind it. I understand why it's necessary to have men bear so much responsibility. It's just the fact that we lie to ourselves about how we're equal. Men and women are equal. Oh, no, they're not. They're not fucking equal. In any capacity. Only in this fucking horse shit that has no basis in reality called egalitarianism... Are women and men equal? In reality, they've never been equal and never will be equal. But we like to have it both ways. We like to pretend we're all equal while putting all the responsibility on men. Anyway, that's all I got to say about this. This is Turd Flinging Monkey signing off.